Disneyland is kind of the foundation for everything in the game. Finding a place that everyone knows, everyone understands, everyone has been to and has feelings about, that was really important to me, that we sort of suck people in with the familiar and then sort of turn everything upside down. If Walt Disney was going to bring into existence a world for forgotten and rejected characters, what form would it take? It's going to be his fondest dream, which is to build this park where adults and kids can experience joy together and where his characters, his creations, can live forever. In that sort of imaginary creation, it wasn't born fully formed. It wasn't perfect. It was incomplete. And so Oswald, its first inhabitant, had to finish it. He sort of has a sense that there's this thing out there, this park, this beautiful place, you know, a place of magic. And so he's trying to recreate it as best he can, but he's never seen it. He's got old photographs and blueprints and stuff to work from. So this was essentially taking that same aspect of the cartoon characters who are forgotten or rejected and applying it to Disneyland. So rides that are rejected, animatronics that are rejected, shops that are rejected, pretty much anything that was in Disneyland or was even considered for Disneyland ended up becoming part of Wasteland. Disneyland has a lot to teach game designers. It's pretty incredible. The way the place is structured with a hub and spokes and transition areas that take you out of one place and, and sort of ease you into another one. We kept looking at all of the little details in the park that had come up throughout history and, and what we could do to pull from each one of those. Tomorrowland itself provided us a, a lot of inspiration for things that had been taken out and replaced. For a majority of the Tomorrowland Beetleworks characters, they've got elements of Tomorrowland from the theme parks in there. So you'll see little bits and pieces and a lot of diehard Disney fans will be able to pick out certain characters or different rides. We tell stories through space and there is no one better than an Imagineer at doing that. What the Imagineers do has infinite lessons to teach us. There were a variety of things that we drew direct inspiration from. The first one actually was uh, a location called Mean Street. I knew that I needed an instantly recognizable place. And so Main Street USA, that iconic image that we all have burned in our brains from early childhood, that image had to be in the game and it had to be slightly warped. Gremlin Village is sort of small world, sort of utility tunnels underneath Disneyland, you know, mixed together. It maintains the same Mary Blair feel of texture and color and, you know, just crazy uh, circus kind of palette. Yet yeah, we, we come back and, and totally uh, weather it and wear it and, and, and dilapidate it. The iconic clock tower. Uh, I looked at that thing at Disneyland and I just said, that's got to be my first boss monster. That, that thing has to come to life. For Lonesome Manor, we start out in the graveyard. In the park, there's actually a line that kind of meanders through the graveyard. We kept the same sort of theme, but kind of turned it into more of a platforming experience. We kept a certain rooms and themes, the ballroom, the library, the stretching room. Everyone who goes to Disney World stands there and they watch those paintings stretch and they see the flashes at the top. Well, here, you're gonna interact with that stuff. We wanted to hint, you know, at the real place, at the real Disney, but from there we we could veer off and, and make it as dark or crazy as we wanted it to be, which was really fun. It really kind of falls into this world of Wasteland being something that people can identify with and feel very familiar and comfortable, but at the same time, it doesn't quite match up to uh, reality, and of course that's as intended. I hope it's kind of, you know, recognizable, but different, familiar yet strange, and funny, but kind of sad in its own way. I want players to feel that whole range of emotions, but always recognizing that this is based on Disneyland. And, and frankly, you know, if you know things about Disneyland, if you know things about Disney's, Disney's history, things will, will be more significant than if you don't have that background. So Disney fans, I think, are going to have a blast.